Now we get to draw some pictures. So we start with a kite that is a string that is 70 feet long. So here's the string, it's 70 feet long, and that's at an angle of 67 degrees. So the question is how high is the kite from the ground? So the kite's up here. And we want to know how high it is off the ground. So this is very similar to the ones we were doing a minute ago where we just need to set up a trig problem. We just had to draw the picture to help us see it. So here's the angle. This is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse. That tells us we need to use sine. Sine, 67 degrees, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we'll just multiply both sides by 70. And we get 70 sine of 67 degrees. And we find out the kite is 64.435 feet above the ground. Now we have a tree that is 15 meters high. So a tree, 15.3, excuse me, 15 meters high. And then it has a 12.3 meter shadow. Okay, the shadow is on the ground. We're not measuring a shadow through the air. So the shadow is what's on the ground. And then we want to find the angle of elevation, meaning you need to find this angle right here. Now given that we're looking at this angle, um, we know this is the opposite side. All right, give me just a second to try to crack this computer going on. It's having trouble. Okay, let's see what it's doing now. Whoop, all right. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's a good sign. Okay, now we know this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. So that tells us to use the tangent. So tangent of this angle we don't know, we'll call it x, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So to solve for that, anytime we're trying to solve for the angle, we need to use arc tangent or inverse tangent. So we'll do second tangent, arc tangent, of 15 over 12.3. That tells us that the angle of elevation is 50.648 degrees. Okay, now we're dealing with the law of signs. Just a reminder, this is what the law of signs looks like. So we can fill in what we have here. Sine of 19 degrees over, we don't know side A, equals sine of 103 degrees over, uh, we don't know side B sine of angle C, and we actually can figure out what angle C is equal to because we know the three angles have to add up to 180. Uh, so if we just do 180 minus 19 minus 103, we get 58 degrees. Over side C, which we do know is 47. Okay, from here you can cross multiply. I'll just choose to do these two. You can cross multiply. We get B sine of 58 equals 47 sine of 103. And then divide both sides by the sine of 58. That will give us, once we plug it in, side B, which I'll just tell you once you plug it in, uh, you get side B, which is actually what they asked for. I'm <laughs> glad that's what I did. Uh, you get side B is 54. So side B is 54. Okay, now we do the law of cosines. Given the following measurements, use the law of cosines to figure out all the sides and all the angles. Well, if you notice, they give us all three sides, so we're going to have to just figure out all three angles. Remember, if this is true, that they give you all three sides, you need to solve for the biggest angle first. And the biggest angle always goes with the biggest side, so that tells me to use this version of it right here. So I'll do 20.1 squared equals 7.5 squared 
plus 17.9 squared minus 2 times 7.5 times 17.9 cosine of C. Okay, remember, you gotta make sure you simplify correctly here. The 7.5 squared can be added to the 17.9 squared. So you get 376.66 and we'll go and do the uh, 20.1 squared, 404.01, and then this we can combine, 2 times 7.5 times 17.9 and get 268.5. But It's important to remember that we cannot combine this number and this number because the 268.5 is attached to cosine C. So they can't be combined because one has cosine and one doesn't. So instead we'll subtract, I'm not dividing, I was just underlining, subtract 376.66 from both sides. So we get 404.01 minus 376.66. So 27.35 is equal to negative 268.5 cosine C. So then we'll divide both sides by 268, negative 268.5. We get negative 0 0.101 um, is equal to cosine of angle C. Again, to figure out the angle, we need to do arc cosine or inverse cosine of that number. Use that exact number by using the answer key. And we get 95.85 for angle C. All right, so we have one of the angles and it is the biggest. Once we do that, we need to switch over to the law of sines. So we'll do sine of angle A, which we don't know, over side A, which is 7.5. Then the sine of angle B, which we don't know, over side B, which is 17.9, equals the sine of 95.85 over side C, which is 20.1. Okay, I'm going to try to save a little bit of time here. Uh, you will just cross multiply. I uh, better keep going. Okay, 17.9 sine of 95.85. Then we do divide both sides by 20.1. So let's type all that in. 17.9 sine of 95.85 divided by 20.1 gives us that. Now that's equal to sine of B. So again, since we need to solve for the angle, we have to use arc sine of that answer. And we get 62.36 degrees. So now we have two angles. We have B is 62.36. We have C is 95.85. So since we have two of the angles, the quickest way to solve for the last one is to subtract those two from 180. So if we do 180 minus those two numbers, we get that angle A is equal to 21.79 degrees. I know, those are long problems. Next ones are quicker. 34, find the amplitude of the given function. Remember the amplitude is just the coefficient out front, but it is the absolute value of that, meaning it's just positive two sevenths. Find the period. Remember we do two pi divided by b, and b is the coefficient in front of the x, or the theta, whatever our variable is. And that's one half theta that's in front. So the thetas cancel out, leaving us two over one half. And to divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal, which gives us four. So the period is four.
Okay, write an equation of the sine function with an amplitude of 9 and a period of 6. Okay, amplitude is 9, so that goes out front. We'll do y equals plus or minus 9 sine. And then to figure out the b value, that's the coefficient for x, we do 2 pi over the period, which will reduce to pi over 3. And don't forget to put a variable in there, x or theta or t, any of those is fine. But we have plus or minus 9 sine of pi over 3 x. Same process here, except we're doing cosine. So we'll do y equals plus or minus the amplitude, which is 7, cosine. To get b, which is the number in front of x that will go inside the parentheses, we do 2 pi over 3 pi. Because so you do 2 pi over the period, the pi's cancel, leaving you just 2 thirds. All right, now we're given the equation, 53 cosine, 5 theta plus pi minus 4. And we're asked to state the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, which is the same as the horizontal shift, and the vertical shift. The amplitude is 53, because that's the coefficient out front. The period is 2 pi over the coefficient in front of theta, which is 5. Okay, to get the phase shift, we see that it's plus. That tells us it's to the left. And we need to do C, which is this number, over B, which is this number. So it's shifting to the left, pi over 5. And vertical, we can tell by that sign right there, it's shifting down. And we know by this number, it's shifting down 4. Now, we're told the temperature in an office is controlled by an electronic thermostat, and the temperature varies sinusoidally according to this function. So part A, what is the temperature of the office at 7 a.m.? We notice it's hours past midnight, so 7 a.m. would mean x equals 7. So we're just going to plug this into this equation. 72 plus 4 sine of pi over 12 times 4 minus pi over 3. Now there's one thing I have wrong here. I'm still in degree mode and I need to be in radian mode. So let's change the mode to radian. Just so you know I will alert you on your exam when what problems need to be degree and what need to be radian. And we get oh sorry let me try that again. For some reason I plugged in a 4 instead of a 7. It is 7 a.m., so plug in 7. Sorry about my mistake there. We get 74.83 degrees, or 74.828 degrees. Please don't round that to a whole number. Temperature can have a decimal. Okay, max and min. We know the max is equal to the midline plus the amplitude, which means 72 plus 4, or 76. The minimum is equal to the midline minus the amplitude, which means 72 minus 4, or 68. Okay, I believe this is the final trig question. You're riding a Ferris wheel with a radius of 40. When the last seat is filled and the ride begins, your seat is at the top of the ride, which is 95 feet above the ground. So let's pause here. We know now that the maximum is 95. And if we think about it, we know the radius is 40, so the distance down is also 40, making the um, total diameter or height of the Ferris wheel is 80. So for this top part to be 95 feet above the ground, we just need to do 95 minus 80 to figure out this is 15 feet above the ground. So 15 is then our minimum. We can use those to find our amplitude. 95 minus 15 over 2. It's going to give us 40 because you do max minus min over 2. And our midline is 95 plus 15 over 2. It gives us 55. And then we can talk about our period.
to find B. So let's go on. This says the wheel makes one revolution every 33 seconds. Well, that tells me the period is 33 seconds. And B is equal to 2 pi over 33 because it's always 2 pi over the period. Now we need to see if there's any kind of horizontal shift or phase shift. It says that when the ride begins, your seat is at the top of the ride. So at the beginning, you are at the maximum. We're starting at the maximum, so we don't have to do any shifting. You don't have to do a C value at all. So we have all of our information here. We'll do 40. Since we're starting with the maximum, we use cosine of 2 pi over 33. Um, T close the parentheses because there's no C value, plus 55. Whew, and that is all the trig problems.